expert advice. Today we have with us Paresh Karya. He is currently director of Easy to Own Estate and he has been a real estate expert for years now. Let's welcome our very special guest. Welcome to the show sir. Thank you. First of all, I would like to ask you, you know, the year 2014 has passed by. But if you see for the real estate industry, it was a year of ups and downs. There were so many changes happening. There were so many things happening for the real estate industry as a whole. So if I ask you to sum up, what would be your response? The year 2014, I would say, has been a mixed bag for the, as far as the real estate industry is concerned. If you see on one hand, we had the sales which continued to remain sluggish. It was very slow uptake and inventories continued to pile up. In fact, in many areas like NCR in Mumbai, we had seen that there was unsold stock for as much as three years and even more. Mm -hmm. And builders were continuing to offer uh, discounts as well as uh, more attractive schemes in order to get the sales moving. And uh, we had seen a plethora of schemes, you know, 20, 80 schemes, mm -hmm. 10 to 15, you know, 75, this kind of schemes which were really keeping the momentum going to some extent. Mm -hmm. And we had also seen that the new launches which were happening now, currently, are uh, at a whole lower price than the earlier launches. So these are the two things which actually kept the sales going in the year 2014. Mm -hmm. You know, on the other hand, we saw that, you know, on the policy front, mm -hmm. we had a new government with absolute majority yeah. And as we all know that the government had in its manifesto promised housing for all by 2022 and it had also promised 100 new cities. So, you know, to, in keeping with its election manifesto, the government has been seriously pursuing its objective and they have made a number of announcements in the budget which should give a major fillip to the real estate sector in the days to come. So, 2015 we are starting on a very optimistic notes and we are expecting lot of action, lot of activity, at least as far as the real estate industry is concerned. Yeah, exactly. We need a little bit of hope, you know, for the entire real estate industry as well as the consumers. A little bit of optimism is required. You know, 2014 has been passed by, but then, you know, there are so many decisions taken in 2014, which are here to stay. Now, one of the decisions or one of the concepts that was been thought of in 2014 was affordable housing. So in this year, 2015, how do you think, you know, we can expect of affordable housing? Well, affordable housing will remain a focus area of the new government. Like you mentioned earlier, you know, government has promised housing for all by 2022. Mm -hmm. Although it looks very ambitious, but nevertheless, a good beginning has been made on this front. As we know that there is a shortage of 25 million houses in our country today and government is working seriously towards it. There was some major announcement made for the affordable which will benefit the affordable housing industry as a whole. As we have seen that the government has liberalized the, the FDI norms for the real estate sector, particularly for affordable housing sector. Mm -hmm. Now any project in which you know 30 percent of the project cost is devoted to affordable housing is completely exempt from any you know FDI cap. So there is no minimum requirement of capital or size and uh, another important measure announced by the government was exempting the long-term bonds raised by the bank from the CRR requirement if this money is used for financing affordable housing. So we can see uh, financing available for affordable housing at subsidized rate from the bank. Mm -hmm. The other problem now we have to see on affordable housing is availability of credit for the property buyer. Now typically if you see people who are buying affordable housing are in the low income group typically from 50,000 to 20,000, from 5,000 to 20,000 mm -hmm. per month. Now those people are mainly engaged in an organized sector. So they do not have access to credit available, you know, through the normal housing loans, companies or the banks, which have stringent uh, credit rating criteria and down payment terms as well as eligibility criteria. So we need to address uh, this concern. The government has allocated uh, 4,000 crores towards NHP. Uh, so, could you tell me what is NHP? NHP is the National Housing Bank. It is the apex authority which regulates housing finance companies in the country. Oh. And it is an institution through which the government also regulates the flow of credit for housing finance to the end users. So, while 4,000 crores in itself is not a very big amount considering the overall requirement, but nevertheless, a beginning has been made and this amount can be utilized 
by NHP to pass all subsidies to the more affordable housing buyers for taking loan as well as it can also be used for giving credit guarantee. Okay, so if I ask you one policy or one decision making that you know that was taken in 2014, that could be a game changer for affordable housing in 2015. I think the liberalization of FDI will definitely be a game changer as far as affordable housing is concerned. Okay. And uh, as we know that government has liberalized the norms, uh, it has reduced the size of investment from $10 million to $5 million. Also the project size which was earlier 50,000 square meters mm -hmm. has now been reduced to 20,000 square meters. And all those restrictions will further not apply to affordable housing projects. So in affordable housing project, anybody, any foreign investor can come in and invest any amount of money, any size of uh, you know, project. So this is an important factor which is going to change the affordable housing. The second important measurement uh, 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 by the government is recent amendment to the land acquisition bill, uh, you know, to the land acquisition act, where the government has put through an ordinance proposed a change. So, in and all, if you see the relaxation of FDI norms, that would be beneficial for the consumers also, as well as the foreign companies investing in India, and it's a boost for housing as well as construction sector. Yes, absolutely. While uh, you know these measures have been announced, mm -hmm. I don't see you know that this will there will be a major crush of flow of funds into the sector. The uh, foreign investors are also waiting and watching and seeing how things are unfolding. And definitely, at least for the affordable housing purpose, we'll see the money trickling in now, and which will ultimately turn into a big flow in the days to come. So, in the year 2015, do you think is it you know you know what kind of contribution 2015 will give towards this goal? Well, in 2015, like we said, you know, affordable housing will continue to be a focus area. The government will, uh, you know, uh, the government has already announced a series of measures. We will see a complete transition as far as affordable housing is concerned. Uh, the, we will see large players, corporate players like you know, Mahindras, Tatas, etc. They are already into affordable housing and they will be a big fish to this sector. Affordable housing per se will turn, you know, like, will become like a manufacturing industry and you know housing will become more of a product okay and then now it was more of an investment the developers were playing more on you know investing in land and holding on and uh, capitalizing on appreciation mm -hmm. in price of the land but now though the, the uh, affordable housing players will focus on a faster turnaround they will want to produce the houses as soon as possible and turn them around and increase the sales so we'll see new technologies also coming in in affordable housing segment. We will see more, like I said, you know, JVs happening in the, with foreign investors acting on the affordable housing segment. We will see liberalized credit being available. We will see housing finance companies coming up to cater particularly. There are already a few companies in the housing finance sector, but we will see more companies, housing finance companies coming in to cater to the requirement of this particular sector. Friends, it's time for a break. We'll be right back to you. Just be with us. Uh, 2014 also saw developments in private equities. You know, could you just elaborate on that? Yeah, 2014 uh, we saw private equity inflow of almost 1.84 billion dollars, uh, uh, compared to about 1.28 billion last dollars last year. Okay. And most of this equity flow was coming mainly into commercial real estate. We saw some large ticket deals by Blackstone mm -hmm. and other private equity players uh, into commercial segment, particularly in Bangalore. So. What was unique about this deals was most of them were structured debt deals. Now, in this year, we will see the private equity inflow increasing into our country. Mm -hmm. There will be more private equity players, there will be more private equity players coming in, and we'll also see them increasing their risks, their appetite, and going in for an equity. Okay. Yes, we'll also see more private equity coming into residential sector, particularly affordable housing. Oh. That sounds really great. And there were also announcements of RITS in India. The concept is not being you know, put into practice in India, but there are plans you know, that they'll have RITS you know, as per a regular practice from the year 2015. So your stance on the same. 
Yeah, we have been talking about tweets and I've been for quite some time. There were some regulatory hurdles because of which they have not been launched. Mm -hmm. You know, now fortunately clarifications have come in from SEBI and SEBI has, you, you know, a lot of listing of our rates. Mm -hmm. However, things are still not very clear as far as our taxation is concerned and our, you know, the players, you know, retailers are still awaiting more clarifications from the government to come in. Nevertheless, we will see that, you know, the, this year, this particular year, you may see the first REITs getting launched in there, getting listed in our country. Probably we could see a large player, you know, commercial player like uh, DLF, which has a huge commercial property mm -hmm. uh, bank, uh, or uh, someone like a Prestige or a Rahaja in Mumbai mm -hmm. coming out with the first REITs, or it could be someone, you know, a private equity player like uh, Blackstone, which has a huge portfolio of yeah. commercial properties acquired over the last few years, mm -hmm. listing this portfolio. But uh, I don't think there is much for a retail investor in the REITs as, as far as REITs is concerned. It will be more of a game for large developers or more, you know, larger foreign institutional investors. Okay, so there was another policy change in the year 2014 which is considered to be very important and that was the amendment to the land acquisition law. So how do you think you know, this would impact the real estate sector? Well, as you know that the Land Acquisition Act was introduced by the previous government mm -hmm. and uh, it was meant to provide fair compensation to the farmers whose land was going to be acquired. Mm -hmm. You know, there were some restrictive conditions in that particular act which were making the uh, acquisition of land extremely difficult. You know, for instance, you required a consent of uh, 70 to 80 percent of the uh, uh, you know, landowners and you also had to do social impact assessment. Oh. Now, all the, because of this, it has become virtually extremely difficult to acquire property for any large project, which is whether it is required by the government or whether it is by the private sector. So as we know that recently the government has passed an ordinance to amend uh, this uh, land or uh, uh, this restrictive clause in the Land Amendment uh, Acquisition Act. You know, it has now been proposed that the amended uh, consent will not be mandatory for defense, uh, rural infrastructure, affordable housing, and uh, industrial corridors and a few other segments which are important for the national interest. Such projects of national interest. For uh, land acquisition for all such projects, the consent will not be necessary and also social impact assessment will not be necessary. So this will make it easy for acquiring plans for the ambitious projects of the government like the invest special investment regions, the industrial corridors, the smart cities and affordable housing. Okay, so there was another announcement that was the you know real estate regulator in Maharashtra. Now, could you just you know speak on that? Yeah. Um, well, the real estate regulator in Maharashtra, you know, the act was passed by the previous government, but it has not been modified as yet. Oh. And I don't see much action ha happening on that, at least in the immediate future. Probably the Maharashtra government is waiting for the central government to pass the Central Real Estate Regulator Act and then it will follow. So when can we expect? I don't think it will happen in 2015. Oh, okay. Okay, in the year 2014, we heard a lot about smart cities. Now, in your language, what is a smart city? Well, uh, you know, smart city, we have seen that the uh, you was know, again one of my interests on BJP's manifesto. Mm -hmm. and the current government seems to be serious about pursuing it. There's mm -hmm. already allocated 7,000 crores in the budget towards a smart city. While the amount is not enough, at least a good beginning has been made. Mm -hmm. Let us try to understand what is a smart city. You know, smart city is something which a modern day, everything which a modern day city should be. It is a well planned city with defined zones for residential, commercial, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, educational institutions, etc. And it was a city which will make extensive use of technology, particularly digital technology, to achieve a objective of you know, utilization, efficient utilization of resources, and also providing quality life to its residents. It will have good infrastructure, road transport, mm. regulated traffic, waste disposal system, etc. And it will also be something that which will conserve resources that will use, uh, you know, uh, uh, alternative energy, power, recycle of waste, etc. to conserve, protect the environment and conserve the resources. So broadly, this is a concept of a smart city. Okay, so according to you, when would the concept of smart city materialize actually? 
uh, smart city creating a smart easy is a member task and obviously it is going to take time. We are not going to see any new smart city coming up in the next one or two years. Oh. It's obviously going to take time. Mm -hmm. What is heartening to know is that the, you know, the action on this one has already begun. The government plans to have two smart cities in each state and also there will be seven cities which are planned across the Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. Okay. And, uh, uh, we will see in the year, in the year to come, we will see the tendering for the cities uh, will already start. Some of the cities which can be identified are, you know, Gift City, we are Ahmedabad, mm -hmm. we are talking about Varanasi oh. being uh, one of the smart cities. Recently when the Prime Minister visited Japan, they had entered into some kind of a, you know, a memorandum with the Japanese government mm -hmm. for promoting Varanasi as a smart city. We could also see progressive states like, you know, Andhra Pradesh. Okay. Where Mr. Chandra Babu Mayu is known for developing mm -hmm. great infrastructure. Yeah. So we could see smart cities coming up in Vijaywada, Kuntu, Vishakhapatnam, etc. Okay, so a micro city, you know, like a city like Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi, are they different from smart cities, the proposed smart cities? Well, with the metro cities like Mumbai, Chennai, etc., as we all know, these are old cities and you don't have to lay down infrastructure over here right from the beginning it's going to be very difficult. If it is a new city, then it can be well planned, can be well organized, mm. the infrastructure and network can be well laid out okay. if it is a new city. You know, for existing cities of a size of Mumbai or Chennai to turn into smart city, mm. it will really take a lot of time. In the year 2050, could we see a little bit development for smart cities? Yeah, definitely. We will see some kind of an action. You know, we will not see actual you know, construction work or something like that. Mm -hmm. But we will see some kind of a policy announcement. We will see some kind of a financial closures. We will see some kind of a tendering and all this process. The initial groundwork will happen, definitely happen in the year 2015. Okay. Uh, in the year 2014, we also heard a lot about DMIC. Now, could yeah. you please elaborate on that? Well, DMIC, as we know, it stands for Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. Mm -hmm. It's a very ambitious plan and it was actually set up by the previous government way back in 2007. But there was very little which the previous government had done on this front. Mm -hmm. Because now, with the new government in place, they have revived the, the DMC plan and they are pursuing it with a vigor. And this is going to be one of the biggest and the most important project mm -hmm. of this government. It's time for a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back to you. So the year 2014 also witnessed, you know, about uh, DMIC. You know, it was spoken a lot. So could you please, you know, tell our viewers what exactly is DMIC? DMIC stands for Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. Mm -hmm. Well, this is one of the most ambitious project which was initiated by the real government way back in 2007. Okay. However, as we all know, there was very little done on this front. Mm -hmm. uh, it's heartening to note that the new government has revived this project and is pursuing it with vigor. Mm -hmm. uh, DMIC is so huge, the first phase of itself is in going to involve investment of 100 million US, 100 billion US dollars. Well, the project and we just setting up a freight corridor right from Delhi to Mumbai. It will be passing on through six states, which is uh, Haryana, mm -hmm. UP, Rajasthan, mm -hmm. Gujarat, Maharashtra, and MP. So it also and we are just setting up of smart cities along the entire corridor, okay. and there will be special investment regions which will be set up along this corridor. Few of the corridors have, uh, you know, actions has already been initiated in mm -hmm. Golera. The Golera in a special investment region we have seen is uh, located close to Ahmedabad and over here the action has already started. The government has already started the funding mm -hmm. plan. Also there are talks about having another special uh, investment region in Shendre, Bitkin, in Maharashtra, near Aurangabad. So another thing which is going to help this uh, uh, industrial corridor is the recent amendment to the land order and uh, the land acquisition act which will make acquisition of land easier for the corridor. Okay. So what if DMIC becomes a reality? How would it impact the entire real estate sector? Well if DMIC becomes a reality then it is likely to change the face of the country. Mm -hmm. It will result into creations of hundreds of thousands of jobs. It will add substantially to the GDP mm -hmm. and there is going to be a huge benefit to the real estate sector as a whole. 
as we know that the perfect corridor is going to pass through seven states. Mm -hmm. So we'll see smart cities coming up the seven states. We'll see special investment regions coming up along this corridor. We'll see all the spaces will require, you know, all the industrial activity will require industrial estates. It will require commercial space, office space. If employment is going to be created, we'll see demand for housing coming up along this uh, you know, sector. We'll see townships, etc., particularly affordable housing townships coming up in this sector. So I see a huge opportunity for the real estate players if this becomes a reality. So 2014 was the year when we saw a lot of infrastructural developments, specifically in a city like Mumbai. You know, we saw a lot of infrastructure taking place in the entire year. So let's talk about the infrastructural development in Mumbai and how did they impact the real estate sector? 2014 has been a landmark year as far as uh, you know completion of the infrastructure projects in Mumbai is concerned. The long pending metro became all uh, from you know the first metro line in Mumbai mm -hmm. from Varsova to Parkopar became fully operational. Mm -hmm. This led to a substantial increase in prices along the metro line, particularly the area in uh, the east. We saw and Harkopar, yeah. we saw the prices appreciating. The prices in Harkopar were before the metro started so three four years back were in the range of eight thousand to nine thousand per square feet, which has now gone up to fifteen thousand and even beyond. We saw major residential areas emerging along Andheri East, which was traditionally uh, uh, mostly an uh, industrial area. Mm -hmm. We have seen the new projects being announced and getting initiated over there. Mm -hmm. So Metro has really transformed life uh, as far as you know this uh, east-west connectivity is also want to cut where it's concerned. Another significant uh, development on the infrastructure front has been the Sandra Push to Link Road. You know, this has been long pending and got finally completed in the year 2014. And we have seen that this uh, connects the eastern part of the city with the western part, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you can reach, you know, the western part, the BKC, from the eastern side in about 10-15 minutes. Yeah. So this has really improved the east-west connectivity further. Next significant development has been the eastern freeway, which again, you know, connects the eastern suburbs to South Mumbai. And you can reach from Chambur to Vadala, from Chambur and Vadala to South Mumbai in just about 20, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So all these projects have generated, you know, most of the world, both these projects, Sandam Chambur Link Road and uh, Eastern Freeway have given a fill up to the eastern suburbs and we have seen air prices in areas like Vadala and Chambur going up substantially. You know, so uh, any infrastructure development in future will have a similar impact in the days to come. We have seen in 2015, we should expect the third line of metro. The work on that has already commenced, the tendering is going on. And with this third line of metro, which will connect Kolama to Seeps via BKC. Okay. And this is likely to be completed in the next four to five years, okay. as for the initial estimate. And once this line becomes operational, we'll see more demand coming up along this area. Particularly, we will see areas like BKC, you know, you know where the, uh, there is other development taking place like flyovers and connected assets are happening in Bagra East, which will decongest the area around BKC and improve the connectivity over there. So we spoke a lot about infrastructural developments, policies, reforms, you know, that happened in 2014. Now the year 2015 has come and we could see a lot of, you know, we could witness a lot of policy making, decision making happening from the beginning of the year. And, you know, it is expected that economy is going to boost. Everything, you know, is everything has been spoken about a lot. Now, keeping in mind the economy in 2015, how do you foresee the economy in this year, keeping in mind the real estate sector? Yeah, as we know, 2014 has not been very good for the economy. The economic growth continued to remain subdued and global economy was also on a slowdown. But one good thing which happened in 2014 was the fall in the oil prices. We have seen the oil prices now coming down to almost $50 a barrel, which was unbelievable, you know, a few years back. So because of which the inflation is likely to come down and the, we are expecting the interest rates to come down in the days to come. Uh, and once that happens, we'll see the economy picking up. We will see more demand coming for housing loans also. Also, there is an important thing that we will notice in the days to come is that government is likely to boost its spending. 
in order to give a push to the economy. We will see some big dice investments taking place which will help the government to bridge its uh, def fiscal deficit. Thereafter, we will see government increasing itself, spending particularly on the large infrastructure projects which will again give a big boost to the economy and lead to job creation. Although investments from the private sector were, you know, on the side will take some time to come, but we expect government expenditure to happen in a big way and we can look for some positive announcements in, in, on this front in the forthcoming budget. This will also lead to an increase on the consumption by the retail you know, consumers. Okay, so even all 2015, you know, it's going to be a really good year for the real estate sector, specifically the real estate players as well as the consumers. Yes, you are right. As far as the activity is concerned, there will be more activity, there will be more action, there will be, mm -hmm. you know, more uh, you know, policy announcements, which will benefit the sector per se. It will benefit both the developers as well as the property buyers. Okay, so it was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for coming on our show. So, we spoke with Paresh Kari of Easy to Own Estate, who spoke a lot about the year 2014 and gave us a little hope about the year 2015. You stay tuned to us for many expert advices and many expert solutions. You keep watching Spin TV. Goodbye. Take care.